Hi, I'm Margaret Peterson Haddix, the author of the Greystone Secret series. I'm going to be reading a chapter from the first book, which is called The Strangers. There is also a second book, which is just now coming out, called The Deceivers. This is what it will look like. Um, I'm not reading you the very first chapter of The Strangers. I'll give you a little bit of a background and then read kind of a pivotal chapter. The Strangers is about three kids whose names are Rochester, who's although he's called Chess, and Emma and Finn Greystone. They come home from school one day, and usually when they arrive home from school, their mother is right there, right away, ready to greet them. On this particular day, she is not at the front door immediately, but they can hear that there's something going on in the kitchen. So they go into the kitchen, and she is there, but she is still not paying them any attention whatsoever. She is just staring, fixated, at her laptop. So they go over and they look at what she is staring at and she's watching a news story about three kids in a totally different state who have just been kidnapped. And the three kids who have been kidnapped are named Rochester and Emma and Finn. And they are the same ages as Rochester and Emma and Finn Greystone. They even have the exact same birthdays. And the kids think this is very weird and then this is pretty much the next important thing that happens. This is from Chess's perspective and it's chapter six. Chess woke up in the middle of the night with aches in his legs. Growing pains, he thought. Mom had explained them to him a year ago and then she'd helped him look them up online. Finn had asked, what? It hurts to grow as tall as Chess? Maybe I'll just stay short. Finn was still so little, he thought you could control things like that. Chess couldn't remember his own brain ever working that way, thinking he got to choose whatever he wanted. For as long as Chess could remember, he'd had to be the responsible oldest kid, the one who had to help mom with Emma and Finn, the mini grown up. Was it just because dad had died when all three of them were so young? Or did the other Rochester, the one who'd been kidnapped, feel that way too. Chess could picture the other Rochester, Rocky, crouched beside his younger brother and sister in some locked windowless back of a van somewhere or some locked windowless basement. The younger kids would be crying, but Rocky would be telling them, everything's gonna be all right. I'll take care of you. Even if he was really thinking, there's no way out. What are we gonna do? Chess could picture it too well. Those kids have probably already been rescued, he told himself. They probably got balloons and welcome home banners and toys and ice cream, just like Finn said, hours ago. But Chess had seen how mom kept checking her phone under the table all through dinner, and even afterward, while everyone was doing homework. She'd also kept her laptop balanced on her knees when, as a special treat before bedtime, she let them watch the first half of the Lego Batman movie. She said she was just typing up invoices to send out for her business, the kind of mindless work she could do while keeping one eye on animated Lego. But Chess was pretty sure she'd been checking news websites too. Mom would have told them if there had been any news about the three kids in Arizona being rescued. Chess stretched his legs, then he slipped out of bed. Sometimes it helped to stand up, sometimes it helped to walk. He decided to go get a drink of water, but just he, as he put his hand on the doorknob, he heard another door open down the hall. Chess peeked out. The nightlight in the hallway cast eerie shadows, but he could tell that mom's door was open down at the opposite end of the hall. A moment later, he heard the creak of the third step down on the stairway. So mom's going downstairs, Chess thought. Sometimes when she couldn't sleep, she got up and worked in the middle of the night. She always said, that's the great thing about working for myself. I can work all night and sleep all day if I want to. I don't have a boss telling me what to do. But Chess wondered if that happened more often when she was worried or upset. Did she ever wake up in the middle of the night and try to remember everything she could about dad the way Chess did sometimes? And was that maybe the reason she decided to get up and work instead? Chess decided to follow her. He tiptoed down the hall and went down the stairs by twos. It was only the third and the ninth ones that squeaked, 
so his descent was totally silent. He didn't want to wake Emma or Finn. Sometimes when the younger kids weren't around, Mom would tell Chess things she wouldn't tell them. But when Chess got down to the first floor, Mom was nowhere in sight. With all the curtains and blinds drawn, Chess had to navigate by the thin slats of moonlight that trickled in along the edges. Once he got to the kitchen, he also had the red glow of the digital clock on the stove. It was 3.15 a.m. exactly when Chess noticed that the door to the basement was slightly ajar. Seriously? Chess thought. It's the middle of the night and Mom still has to go down to the boring room to keep from being distracted? He started down the basement stairs but froze when he heard Mom talking. I thought you'd never call, she was saying. Who would call Mom in the middle of the night? Who would she want to talk to then? Chess strained his ears, trying to listen for even the barest hum of a reply, but there was nothing. Maybe the person on the other end of the phone call was whispering. Do not tell me to calm down, Mom said. This is exactly what I was afraid of. The pause was shorter this time. Then Mom exploded again. Oh, right, it's not my kids, she said. Not yet, but it's somebody's kids. It's kids I can imagine really well because I know exactly what an eight and a 10 and a 12 year old are like. And I'll tell you, they're completely innocent. They're, the person on the other end of the phone call must have interrupted her, but maybe she interrupted him or her right back because she didn't pause long enough to take a breath. It's not a coincidence, Joe, she said. She didn't even sound like mom now. She sounded cold and mean and cutting. You have to fix this, or so help me, I will. So that's chapter six of The Strangers. Thank you.